Hello, my name is Eric Chow and I direct the UCSF Center for Advanced Technology. Today, I'm gonna to give you a training video on how to ad operate the Agilent Bioanalyzer. This is the system used to QC nucleic acids to go into next generation sequencing library preps, as well as checking the quality of your final libraries for sequencing. This is the Bioanalyzer. Essentially, the system works by capillary electrophoresis, but instead of running samples through a long, thin capillary, all the uh, separation occurs on these microfluidic chips over here. So I'm going to open up this chip and show you some more details of this chip. The chip is actually made out of glass and there are several wells on the chip and this glass chip is embedded into a plastic frame. And on the back of this chip, you'll be able to see a whole bunch of different channels and this is where all the different samples will run and get separated and then get detected. This chip, once it's prepared, will go into this bioanalyzer instrument. And this instrument has a location to hold the chip, as well as an optical detector at the bottom to detect the passing nucleic acids, and an electrode array on top. And this electrode array on top is what causes the different samples that pass through the chip and migrate towards that detector. So we haven't done anything to prepare the chip yet, and we'll go through that next. So with all the different kits for the bioanalyzer, you can analyze both RNA and DNA. They come with a handy user guide that we'll essentially be following today. And in this user guide, um, there are sections where it tells you to prepare a gel dye mixture. This is something you'll have to do ahead of time, and it takes about 30 minutes. So this is something we've done before, uh, before we've shot this video. But all the reagents for the kits come in a small box like this that's kept in the cold room and they all come with a, a pack of chips that are at room temperature. And so once you open up this box, and today we're gonna to be going over the DNA height sensitivity kits, you'll see a set of uh, reagents in here. And the reagents that you'll need to prepare the gel dye mixture ahead of time are a dye, the gel, and a spin filter. And what you'll do ahead of time is take a certain amount of the dye add it to the gel and vortex it, and then you'll place this gel dye mixture into this Eppendorf tube that has a spin filter in there, and you'll centrifuge this for about 30 minutes. This will cause the gel dye uh, to form a nice even suspension, and when you're done, you'll throw away the filter and keep the gel dye in this Eppendorf tube at four degrees. And you'll be able to use this gel dye mixture several times uh, for, uh, for several runs across many chips. So what I have here is a tube of gel dye that we've already prepared, and this is what we'll be using today. But before we start uh, preparing the chip, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to run the software. The software that runs the bioanalyzer is the 2100 expert software. When you open up the software, it will automatically connect to the bioanalyzer instrument. And on the left are a set of tabs that, uh, icons that you can use to navigate to different areas of the software. To set up the run, you wanna make sure you click on the instrument icon. And on the instrument icon, again, you'll see a picture of the bioanalyzer, and the first thing you want to do is select the assay that you're running. Again, the bioanalyzer can analyze both DNA and RNA, and if you're selecting DNA, uh, you wanna select the proper chip. And today, we're running the high sensitivity chip. For RNA, there are two different types of kits. There are these uh, uh, nano and pico kits, um, as well as a small RNA kit if you wanna run small RNA assays. But what's important about the nano and pico kits if you're analyzing RNA and wanna get a RIN number, this is an RNA integrity number, you have to make sure that you select the total RNA options. And this will cause the software to calculate a RIN number. If you select the mRNA options, you won't get a RIN number for your RNA. So again, since we're running DNA high sensitivity, we'll go to double-stranded DNA and select high sensitivity. Next, you have an option to select where your data gets saved to. It can save into a default folder or a custom folder that you select. After that, let the system know how many samples you'll be running. On the high sensitivity DNA chip, you can run up to 11 samples. Today, we'll only be running two samples. And at the bottom, you can give names of your different samples and you can label them down here. And so we'll just use sample A and sample B. So now we're gonna set up the instrument and the chips to run your samples. Again, this is the bioanalyzer, and this head opens up and down to get the electrodes into a chip. 
If you need to remove your electrode, simply flip down a tab that's over here all the way to the bottom. This will push out the electrode array by a little bit, and once it's out, you can slide it back. And if you need to store this electrode array, store it upside down so that these electrodes don't get damaged uh, by bumping up against surfaces. To put the electrode back into the system, simply slide it back down and allow it to go down on its own. Don't force it in. Once it's dropped to the lowest position, lift the lever up and this will pull the electrode array in. The next thing we're going to do is wash the system. To wash the system, you want to use 350 microliters of nuclease-free water and place it into a wash chip. You can use any well of the wash ship because all of the wells are connected by a reservoir. To wash, simply place the wash ship on the chip holder and close the system and let it sit for about 30 seconds to one minute. All this does is wash off any salts and debris that might be on the surface of those electrodes. Once the wash is done, go ahead and remove the chip and you can just dump out the water into the trash and save the chip for future runs. Now we'll prepare our chip. I've already opened this up from the plastic packaging and we'll place this into the priming station. The chip sits down in here and doesn't really move. And on the priming station, it's important to note that this is uh, made of a plunger and there is a holder to hold the plunger at different positions. And depending on which chip and assay you use, you'll need to make sure that you set the plunger to the proper setting. So there's a top, middle, and bottom setting. For the high sensitivity DNA chips, we'll have to use this lower setting. And so you just move the silver handle down until you get it to this lower location. And make sure it catches into the hold. So now this is set at the low position and we're ready to start adding our reagents. The first reagent we'll be using is the gel dye mix that we prepared ahead of time. This has had the dye added to the gel and spun through a filter already. What we'll do first is add nine microliters of the gel dye mixture to the gel position that's marked with a dark circle on your chip. And this is gonna be the second from the bottom. When you add reagents to these chips, you wanna make sure that you touch the bottom of the chip. You don't have to worry about marring them because they're made out of glass, so they're much harder than your pipette tips. The other thing you wanna make sure that you don't do is expel a bubble at the bottom of the chip because that's where those capillaries and channels are. If you have an air bubble down there, it's gonna disrupt the flow of current. The next step is to bring the syringe up to the one mil mark, and then snap the lid shut until you hear a click. Next, gently and steadily push the plunger all the way down until it catches the hold. And you wanna set a timer for one minute. What's happening right now is the pressure in the syringe is forcing that gel dye mixture through a capillary inside of the chip. And this is forming that separation channel that all the samples will go through. So both the pressure and timing are important for the different chips. So make sure you consult your user guide if you're running something else besides the high sensitivity DNA chip. So while this is running, we have about another 30 seconds. One thing you can use to check your chips afterwards is you want to make sure that you don't see any of the channels after pressurization because now they've all been filled with liquids. Before we do this step, if you take a look at your chip on the back, you can actually see all the channels if you hold it up to the light because of the glass air interfaces that are present. But after priming, you shouldn't see those anymore because they should all be fluid filled. A minute is up and we'll just release the plunger. What you want to see is the plunger going up uh, past the half mil mark within a couple of seconds. And this indicates that no pressure has leaked out of the system. And so now you just slowly bring the plunger back up to the one mil mark. And then release the plunger from the chip. Next we'll add another nine microliters of the gel dye mixture to the other three gel positions on the chip. These are the other three uh, wells on the right side of the chip. You can use the same pipette tip for all of these. And again, just remember not to expel any air bubbles towards the bottom of the 
the bottom of the wells. Next, we're going to add five microliters of a marker solution to each of the sample wells and the ladder wells. These are the 12 wells to the left of the chip. So we don't add these to the gel wells that we've added material to already. And you can use the same pipette for all of these as well. And this just contains an upper and lower marker that can be used as reference standards to compare your sample to the ladder. So even if you're only running one or two samples or not a full 11 samples, you still have to add marker to all of the lanes or to all of the wells. In the next step, we'll add one microliter of the ladder to the ladder well, and this is marked on the chip. Now we can add your samples. And again, there are references uh, to the well number that correspond to the sample numbers on the chip. I only have two samples, so I'm now done. But you can proceed with up to 11 samples on this chip. The next step is to mix the contents of the, uh, of the marker and the, uh, the samples or the ladder in the chip. And to do this, we use a special vortexer that comes with every bioanalyzer. So just make sure it's set to the proper set point and then allow it to mix. And make sure you uh, set a timer so that you, have, uh, so you know when to stop. And again, to get the times for the different assays, just consult your user guide. All right, time's up. Now the chip is prepared and ready to run. What we want to do is go ahead and place this into the bioanalyzer system, close the lid, and then once the system detects the chip, you'll be able to click on the start button to begin the run. A run of a full chip will generally take about 45 minutes. And it's a good idea to stick around for a few minutes till you see the, the ladder run, just to make sure the run has started OK before you take off. Now our second and last sample is running. What you see here is a raw trace from the bioanalyzer. And this is analyzing fluorescence that's being detected as the sample passes through the capillary. On the low end, we have the lower marker. And over here, we have the upper marker. These are used as internal references to compare the sample to the ladder that was run first. And in the middle here is our library. This is a high concentration sample that is roughly at around 25 nanomolar. And so this is why this smear is so large. You'll notice that the marker peaks are pretty sharp because they're a defined size. And libraries tend to have a spread to them because they come in a, a variety of sizes. They're not one specific uh, uh, base pair length. And so now the run is finishing, and I'll show you how to analyze and export the data. So now that, that screen has disappeared, the run is done. To access our data, we come back over to the left-hand side and click on the data icon. If you have several runs from beforehand, you'll see the other chips here. The newest one will be at the bottom, which is our sample. And if we click on that chip, we'll get some details about the, uh, the chip, the assay properties, and then if you want to take a look at the raw traces, you click on the electropharogram. And this will show you the trace for uh, either one sample at a time. So this is our first sample. And this was our second sample. Or you can look at all samples at once. And here's sample A and sample B. And down here is the ladder. And so if we click on the ladder, it has a series of peaks uh, that are present in that ladder sample. And the latter also contained the marker that we added, the five microliter reagents. And those are this 35 base pair and roughly 10 kb 
base pair fragments that are present in all samples. And so the latter is used as a reference because we know the sizes and we correlate it with the time that it takes for those samples to come through the chip. And we have these internal references that we'll use compared to each of the samples. So now if we click on sample A, it'll also have that 35 and 10 KB marker uh, that are used to uh, generate the, the sizing of these samples. So down here on the electropharogram, there are a couple of things you can do. You can set something called a region table. And for next-gen sequencing libraries, you typically set these around 200 base pairs up to 1 KB. And that's displayed here. And what this will do is it'll analyze only the material that shows up within this range. And this will give you a rough concentration in picomole. So this is a little over 4,000 picomole molar concentration, or roughly 4 nanomolars. It'll also give you an average size, which is useful for some downstream QCing steps. And so this library has an average size of 320 base pairs. Our other high concentration sample, again, is also being analyzed in the smear region. Uh, and what you can see is that this is a much higher concentration library. This is measuring it at roughly 17 nanomolar. And the average size is 491 base pairs. Sometimes, the bioanalyzer won't detect your marker peaks correctly, and you'll see a red flag or red mark down here in the simulated gel image. This is something that's easy to correct by going to the peak table tab over here. So for instance, uh, on this sample B, we have this minor peak that showed up. Sometimes this minor peak might get misidentified as a marker. And on this peak table, um, what you can do is you can highlight over these peaks, and once you see a bullseye appear, you can right click and manually set them as the lower or upper marker. And so for instance, if I wanted to call this 29 base pair peak by 35 base pair standard or internal reference, I can right click on it and manually set the lower marker. And this will recalculate the size of everything. So now you can see that the software is now called this my 35 base pair peak. And it's calling this marker a 46 base pair peak. So this isn't what I actually want, so I'll go ahead and change it back and hover over my actual lower marker, see the bullseye, right click and set lower marker. So once your data looks like it's all been set and is uh, all the peaks have been properly called, you can export this as a PDF by clicking the printer button on the toolbar. And so sometimes it'll ask you if you wanna save any changes. And so I said, yes, I wanna save those peak changes that I made a window will show up and it'll give you options of what type of items to select. We just leave this as the default. You can tell it to print all wells or just the wells that you have samples. And for us, you only had two samples. And then you have options to export this as a PDF or an HTML, HTML file and to select the directory that you want to export this to. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop to make it easier to find. And you have options to put four sheets per page or one sheet per page. So I'll go ahead and save this. And if we go to the desktop, we should be able to see our PDF file. And that should be here. So if you double click on this, you'll see a summary report on the first page. And as you scroll down, you'll see the ladder over here, and you want to see nice, tight, sharp bands or peaks on the ladder, and then you'll see the samples. And these will uh, include some extra information down at the bottom. And so most people uh, will want to save the PDF because this is a file they can open on their own computers. You can't open the actual bioanalyzer raw files, these XAD files, because it requires the proprietary software. So you definitely want to export and save that PDF. And generally, this PDF is what you would send off uh, to your sequencing facility if you're getting sequ uh, samples sequenced. So now that the run is completed, the last thing we have to do is wash the system. So the first thing you want to do is pull out the old chip, set it aside, you can throw it away, it's unusable right now, and then take another wash chip and fill it again with 350 microliters of nuclease-free water. and then place a chip in the system and close the lid and let it sit for about 30 seconds uh, to one minute. And it's really important that you do this afterwards because we want to clean the electrodes of any gel and salts uh, that are going to be on the electrodes from running the chip. It's not good to leave a chip in there long term because those things can dry on those electrodes 
a cost problem for the next user. The other point is that it's really important that you remove the wash tip. If you leave it in there, uh, the water will start to evaporate and cause condensation inside of the electrode array. So there are a lot of electronics up above uh, that we don't want to get moisture on. So now that 30 seconds is up, we remove the wash chip. We can get rid of the water, set it aside, and then just close the system, and you're done. Thanks for watching.